Just when you thought the political train wreck in Afghanistan couldn't possibly get any worse, the Taliban announces that the Afghan men and women who are trying to leave the country before the August 31st deadline are no longer allowed to leave. CNN reports. The Taliban said Tuesday that they were not allowing the evacuation of Afghans anymore and warned that the U.S. must stick to next week's deadline to pull out as a frantic Western evacuation operation at Kabul airport picked up pace. The announcement came as U.S. President Joe Biden made clear he aims to stick with his August 31st deadline to withdraw troops from Afghanistan as long as the Taliban does not disrupt ongoing evacuation operations or airport access. Top American allies have already called for an extension in order to fly more people out. The proposed extensions would only be for Americans and other foreign nationals. Since Afghans are no longer allowed to leave, all the extensions in the world can't save them. Taliban spokesman Zabiola Mujahid, who now has more than 350,000 followers on Twitter, told a press conference Tuesday that while foreign nationals could continue traveling to the airport, the huge crowds of Afghans that have gathered there in recent days should return home and would not face reprisals from the country's new rulers. No reprisals from the Taliban. We believe you, Mr. Mujahid. The road, which goes to the airport, is blocked. Afghans cannot take that road to the airport, but foreign nationals are allowed to take that road to the airport, Mujahid said. We are not allowing the evacuation of Afghans anymore, and we are not happy with it either, he added. The doctors and academics of Afghanistan should not leave this country. They should work in their own specialist areas, Mujahid added. They should not go to other countries, to those Western countries. So, doctors and academics don't want to live in a country governed by the Taliban. Shocker. But if all your doctors flee, who's going to patch up all the jihadis? And if all your academics flee, who's going to bring this terrorist state into the 21st century? The jihadi struggle is real, folks. Asked about the statement from the Taliban, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said that should not impact Afghans who were prioritized by the U.S. to leave the country. No, that is not how you should read it, Psaki said. Our expectation, which we have also conveyed to the Taliban, is that they should be able to get to the airport, she later added. I decided that if the Taliban spokesman is saying one thing about what the Taliban is going to do and the White House spokeswoman is saying something different about what the Taliban is going to do, I'm going with the Taliban spokesman. Sorry, Jen. Many of those fleeing the country since the Taliban took over have been educated people, especially women. The last time the Taliban ruled, women were banned from working and forbidden to attend schools and universities. Who wants to get as far away from Islamic law as possible, as quickly as possible? Women and educated people. Now, why doesn't the Taliban want women and educated people to leave? Think about it. The Taliban could say, look, we're here to establish an Islamic state governed by Islamic law. If you don't want to live under Islamic law, then by all means, get out of here. They could let all of these people go, leaving only people who want to be led by the Taliban. So why don't they do that? Part of the answer is that they want the women for their jihadis, and they want the educated people to serve the Islamic State. But that's not the main reason. Due to the recent fighting, there are plenty of widows for jihadis, and what kind of role are educated people going to play in Afghanistan, really? Not much. So what's the main reason the Taliban is blocking Afghans from leaving? The main reason is that the Taliban is an organization made up entirely of control freaks. If you know anything about control freaks, they do not like people to have some other place to go. Control freaks often make life a living hell for the people they're trying to control, but they do not want these people to have a way of escaping. An abusive boyfriend makes life extremely painful for his girlfriend, but he does not want her to be able to leave. Ever. I want you to understand this point because I'm convinced that the fundamental dividing line in the world today is not between East and West. It's not between rich 
and poor. It's not between this race and that race. It's not between this political party and that political party. The fundamental dividing line in the world today is between people who are obsessed with controlling everyone else and people who do not want to be controlled by them. The terrifying reality here is that even though we see the obsession with control when we look at the Taliban, even though we see it in North Korea, even though we see it with the Chinese Communist Party, narcissistic control freaks are all around us. They control your tech platforms. They make your movies and your TV shows. They're your college professors. They give you your daily news. There are even non-human control freaks that you carry around with you in your pocket. There are the algorithms in the apps on your cell phone. They're programmed to gather information about your behavior so that your behavior can be modified by the highest bidder. Human beings have never, at any point in history, under any government, been subject to this level of constant manipulation. So, which kind of control freaks would you prefer? The ones who are open about it? The ones who make it obvious, like the Taliban or the government of North Korea? Or the ones who control you while making sure that you don't realize you're being controlled? Which control freaks do you think are more dangerous?